1865 entry in the Extraordinary Voyages series sees a group of escaped prisoners of war stranded on a remote Pacific island, with nothing but their wits to survive on. Fortunately, they are protagonists in a Jules Verne novel, and when they identify among their number a man of science with a thirst for adventure, it seems only a matter of time before they set up island-wide 5G internet coverage. But while the island's wild nature is quickly tamed through trademark Victorian industry and ingenuity, a series of seemingly supernatural events befall our castaways. Would Verne really entertain a divine intervention in his novel? Or is there more than meets the eye to the mysterious island? Here I'll be taking a look at the 1959 limited editions club version of this classic of science adventure. The book arrives in a green slipcase of fairly sturdy construction bearing a simple title label on its spine. The volume is bound in buckram linen printed with a monochrome wraparound design by the illustrator. Like any design that is surface printed onto linen, it feels a little prone to rubbing and I have my copy in a protective mylar dust jacket. The monthly letter describes the colour as a rather eerie green-blue that seems to match the colour of the story. The spine is labelled in gilt on black, and laying the book on its side, we find the top edge is stained in that eerie green colour. The binding, of course, is sewn. Typeset in 12-point monotype Electra with generous leading, the text is clear and reasonably stylish. It is embellished with raised caps at the start of each chapter, set in thorn shaded. Everything is printed on Curtis Colophon paper from the Curtis Paper Company. It falls short of the luxurious quality of stock used in 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, but that's to be expected given that this is a much longer book. The book was produced at the Garamond Press in Baltimore. The volume is illustrated by Edward A. Wilson, a regular contributor to the LEC editions, including several other Verne novels. The 32 pen and wash illustrations are generously scattered throughout the book, and were coloured by hand in the studio of Walter Fisher. They have a definite 1950s vibe, but capture the spirit of adventure fairly well. The frontispiece in particular encapsulates the high drama of the novel. The book is divided into three parts, and each also begins with a small two-colour title illustration. The book's translation is attributed to W.H.G. Kingston, although Wikipedia notes that it was his wife, Agnes Kingston, who really did the work. It's a 19th century translation that is now maligned for interfering with Verne's original text by changing character names and omitting plot points that might offend Victorian colonialist sensibilities. That said, it is eminently readable and viewed as a text in its own right cannot be faltered. In Verne's trademark style, the plot is a slightly absurd love letter to science and engineering that can't help but beguile readers with its unapologetic techno-optimism. Despite its length, it moves at a steady clip and makes for a fairly compelling adventure yarn. By the end, everything gets tied up in a nice, fulfilling conclusion. I'd be remiss if I didn't also mention the excellent introduction by esteemed science fiction author Ray Bradbury, who wears his affection for Verne with pride. The book ends with a colophon signed by the illustrator. It is identified as one among 1500 copies and is hand numbered. <laughs>